Hello everyone. I am myself Dr. Rajesh Gubba. I am the general medicine educator. In this short video, I'll discuss the important auscultatory points in aortic stenosis. In aortic stenosis, you know you don't have much abnormality on the first heart sound, but in the systolic phase that is in between S1 and as well as S2, you have ejection systolic murmur or the mid systolic murmur. And if you see the character of this ejection systolic murmur, it is a diamond shaped murmur, it is crescendo decrescendo murmur and it is heard in the second right intercostal space that will radiate to the carotids. And how will be the second heart sound? In the second heart sound, you have two components A2 and as well as P2. The A2 will be soft and depending upon the severity of aortic stenosis, the split between A2 and P2 will decrease. So there will be a narrow split S2 and there can be a single S2 if it is a severe aortic stenosis. And in the diastolic phase that is in between S2 and S1, you will listen an additional sound that is S4. And that is due to strong atrial contraction to push the blood from atria to the ventricle. And the another very important phenomenon in aortic stenosis is the Galliverdin phenomenon. So Galliverdin phenomenon is the murmur of aortic stenosis. It will radiate or it is conducted or it is heard at the apex of the heart. And it is heard as a holosystolic murmur or pansystolic murmur. So at the apex, the pansystolic murmur is heard in mitral regurgitation. So the Galliverdin phenomenon, it mimics mitral regurgitation. So how do you differentiate that in mitral regurgitation, the murmur will radiate to the axilla. But in Galliverdin phenomenon, the holosystolic murmur does not radiate to the axilla. So this is what is your Galliverdin phenomenon. And these are the important auscultatory findings in patients with aortic stenosis.